Don't you love Father T? Would you show him how much you love him? In my own community, we have a tradition where we priests ask our fellow priests to give us their blessing. So I'm going to ask your pastor to give me his blessing so I can speak to you God's word. Amen. Testing Ave Maria. Is it working? Okay, that's the official Catholic microphone test. But brothers and sisters, as I told you, I'm, something stunning happened this evening. And I do apologize for being late. It's very embarrassing, but that's good. God makes me humble that way. You see what I mean? I need humility. But something uh, incredible happened. And I find this is always true. When you and I walk in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, I was there at the shrine of Our Lady, Queen of Peace, Santa Clara. I went there actually to pray for you, not for me. I went there to pray for you, to Our Lady, to have miracles tonight, and to prepare myself for this Mass. And my little GPS said an hour and 15 minutes to come back here. I said, well, I, I think I'll leave around 3 o'clock. So I'll be here like at 4, 4.15. Well, what happened is I was walking towards my car. A young man stopped me about 2.55. He said, Father, can I ask you a question? I'm walking to my car to put my books away and to get ready to start heading here. And, of course, I knew it was not right to rush past and say, no, I'm in a hurry. How many people do that sometimes? And so I said, well, I know God wants me to help him. So I stopped and said, yes, yeah, sure. What's your question? He stopped to ask me a question. And I looked at him in the face as he spoke to me. He began to growl like an animal. At him. He growled like an animal. I won't do what he did, but his eyes started to roll back in his head. He was filled with demon spirits. And there was no one there to help him. And of all the people in the shrine that day, I'm trained as an exorcist with 40 years of experience. And he rocked into me at that moment. I said, okay. I said, calm down. Thank God I'm praying because I'd have been scared to death. You know what I mean? He was growling at me like an animal. I said, well, let's pray the unity prayer together, I told the young man. He didn't really know it, so I said it out loud. And this is a beautiful prayer that we passed out here in this parish last year. And it goes like this. In fact, why don't you say this after me? It's a new prayer in the Holy Roman Catholic Church, approved by the cardinals and the bishops, and it blinds all evil spirits, paralyzes. So let's blind the devil from this church right now. Amen? Amen. Would you say this after me, friend? The newly approved prayer with an imprimatur. Would you say this now? My adorable Jesus, My adorable Jesus. May, our may our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our, gather in unity. May our heart beat in unison. May our, May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together, May our lips pray together. to gain mercy from the eternal Father. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Isn't that a beautiful prayer? And you want to learn that, you can look it up on the internet. I'll see if I can send some to Father to pass out to you in the weeks to come. 
Beloved, that prayer, every Catholic needs to know it now. We are living in a very unusual time, are we not? These are apocalyptic times, but they are living really at the end of an era now. It may not be the last day of the world, but it's the last days of this era, and the beginning of a new era is coming. The era of the triumph of Mary's Immaculate Heart. Amen? So the evil, beloved, is coming to a head now. The darkness is coming to a head. Can you imagine leaving Mary, Queen of Peace, trying today at 3 o'clock to be with you, to be here an hour or two early, and a boy comes up to me here, born and raised in California, and he's growling like a wolf. Beloved, that's what's happening to our young people today. Amen? Yeah. And so we had quite a time. I walked with him and brought him away from other people so no one else would be affected or scared. And we sat down outside. And I asked the boy, when's the last time you've been to confession? It's been quite a few months. I said, we should have your confession. If you're ready, I'll hear your confession now. See, beloved, here's a lesson to learn tonight. If you have sins that are not yet confessed, the devil can hide underneath your sins inside of you. Sins are they're like little blocks inside of you, like little logs. Every time you sin, like a little black rock inside of you, and the devil can hide under it. But if you confess your sins, the rocks are thrown out of you. Everything is clear. There's no more hiding places for the devil. Amen? So make sure you get the confession between now and Christmas. Amen? I think here at this parish, they're absolutely free here at this parish. There's no charge at all. So make sure you get your confession, beloved, so there's nothing the devil can hide under. So I sat with a young man. We had an interesting talk, and I taught him a prayer that immediately began to give him relief. And I asked uh, my helpers to give it to you tonight. Did you get the little tiny red prayer card just now? Beloved, that's worth a million dollars. We'll have another collection of the Mass. You each owe me one million dollars. That prayer is valuable. It came another apparition of Jesus and Mary to a teenage boy in Africa also approved by the bishops of Nigeria. That little one-line prayer was given by Our Lady, and I said it with this young man, and as I said it with him, he had to fight. The devil and he did not want him to say it. He was, he was gargling. He wasn't speaking normal language. He couldn't speak. I said, calm down. Let me say a prayer for you, and we're going to try again. So we said a prayer together. I said the St. Michael prayer. And let's say it right now. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world Seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Is that a beautiful prayer? And who wrote that prayer? Pope Leo XIII, one of your popes, a holy pope, after he had a vision. So when I said that prayer with a young man there at Our Lady Queen of Peace Shrine, suddenly he was able to talk again. As soon as we said the prayer to St. Michael, the angels came down and threw the demons away from him. So he could say the prayer you have in your hand. So I had him read it out to me. It's only 12 words. Would you now say this after me? The prayer that he and I said. You have it now. It's worth all the money in the world. And you need this prayer. Because this prayer. Because you better get ready for the battle right now. Amen. And maybe that's why God let that boy hit me. Let him see me right there, make me late for you, to give you a lesson tonight on the battle that's coming to California and to the world now. Amen? It's a battle not just against other nations. I think we will be invaded, by the way. 
but it's a battle against demons in particular. Amen? And that prayer is a deliverance prayer. I spoke to the Bishop of Nigeria personally about this prayer. He said, Father, it's completely approved. Please, he told me, spread it throughout the world. So now I'm obeying the bishop. Share this prayer with you tonight. Amen? Yeah. It's only 12 words. Can you read it there on your card? Let's read it together, what it says on your card. It's in English on one side, Spanish on the other. Let's do the English side. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. One more time. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. One more time. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, in the first reading from the book of the prophet Daniel, we read about all the kingdoms of the earth. We have a lot of kingdoms today, and they're almost all sinful. China and Russia, but even the United States, we've become a sinful nation. Amen? And Daniel was prophesying several thousand years before tonight, several thousand years ago. He was a young prophet, but a holy and excellent prophet. And he talks about, he says, in the lifetime of all these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that shall never be destroyed or delivered up to another people. He will set up his own kingdom. The kingdom of God he will set up under the name and through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the kingdom he's talking about. Talk about this great stone. Jesus said, I am a living stone and so are you. There is one kingdom that will never be destroyed. China could be destroyed. Russia could be destroyed. We could be destroyed. But the kingdom of God, which is the Catholic Church, will never be destroyed. Amen? And so the Lord is giving his church now, his kingdom, special weapon. Because we are under attack. Amen? We're under attack as a nation. And did you realize, brothers and sisters, that everything that's happening now was prophesied a long time ago? Did you realize that the Virgin Mother of God even appeared in this country in Valley Forge to the first president, George Washington? Did you realize that? Raise your hand if you've heard about that, the, the visions of Mary to George Washington. Let me ask you this. Did you know that George Washington was baptized Catholic on his deathbed? Did you know that? You know why you don't know? Because the news media is totally sold out. And they'll never tell you anything that's good and godly, pro-Jesus and pro-Catholic. Amen? Well, beloved, let me tell you about that just for a moment. First of all, we know that George Washington was baptized on his deathbed by a Catholic priest. There are records about this, about the priest who actually did it. We even have his name. And after he baptized our first president, he went across the Potomac River to his own community of priests, and he told them, brothers, he said, it is done. George Washington called him over when he was in his deathbed, and he was baptized. And one new proof we have of George Washington's Catholic faith is right there in his residence where he was living before he died. A special painting was returned to the home of George Washington just a couple of years ago. The house where he lived, the beautiful estate where he was, not too far from Valley Ford, it has been restored to its original beauty when he lived there with his wife, Martha Washington. There was one painting that was missing from the collection. It was just returned by a great, 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 great nephew of George Washington. It was restored and put back up in the mansion. Do you know which painting it was? The Blessed Virgin Mary. Now, let me ask you this. Who puts paintings of Mary in their house? Catholics do! Amen! 
Catholics do that. It's the painting of Mother Mary was just returned to his house. Mama Mia! Your first president was Roman Catholic. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Raise your hands to God. And give God a round of applause to God. <laughs> Beloved, the press won't tell you these things. You know what I mean? The New York Times, CNN. They're, they're, they're hopeless. They're hopeless. And God will take them down soon. They're hiding all the good things from you. All the good things. But beloved, in the new time that's coming, all the good will come out and the dark will disappear. Amen? But I want you to know something about George Washington. When he was at Valley Forge, you know, he was losing the battle, that, you know, the Revolutionary War. We were outnumbered by the British more than 10 to 1. It was in the middle of winter. Close to Christmas, the snow was knee high and sometimes as high as the hip. George Washington's men had no food. Half of his men had no shoes. They'd been fighting, you see, for several months. And they would lose their shoes in battle. They weren't that good, you know what I mean? They, they don't buy shoes from stores back then. You made shoes. Half of his men were barefoot in the snow. They were frostbitten. It was something pretty terrible. They did not have enough food to eat, and they had no ammunition to fight any longer. The British were well fed. They had all the ammunition they needed. They were waiting in the harbors for another attack as soon as the snow would stop. George Washington was writing letters to the Continental Congress, not getting any answers. He says, we need food, we need money, we need shoes. That day in Valley Forge, there's a marker there now where his tent stood. And I went to that marker to pray a few months ago. And I brought a community with me. They're now praying there every day, the rosary for our country, at that marker where the tent was. Because in that tent, that day, something happened that the whole world needs to know about. And there were three historians in particular who un dug up all this information. I first heard it when I was a young man on EWT and with Mother Angelica. On her television show, the historians were there. And they're, by the way, they're not all Catholic either. Of what really happened at Valley Forge. We were losing and the tent was set up there for his general's headquarters. And he told the lieutenant, Lieutenant, Stand guard outside the tent. I want no visitors this afternoon. I have some letters I have to write and some plans I have to do. How can he fight an army 10 times bigger with no ammunition and no food and no shoes? So he went inside. He began writing letters, looking at a battle plan. He gave strict orders that no one was interrupting that afternoon. When suddenly, George Washington said this. We have an account actually printed in the newspaper dating for the year 1840. What I'm telling you right now. Given by the lieutenant who was there. Suddenly, no one allowed in. George Washington said he turned to his right. There was a motion in the room and he turned. He said the most beautiful heavenly creature. A woman, he said, of unparalleled beauty was standing before me. Who do you think that was? Give me a break. Of course it was Mama. Amen? A woman of unparalleled splendor and beauty, he said, stood before me. And George Washington went to raise his hand and like motioned her like this, like stay back. And he wanted to say something to her because he was a very proper man. He was a good man. He was a Christian. He wasn't yet Catholic. He sure was after this day, though, let me tell you. But he wasn't yet Catholic, but he was Anglican. So they have a respect for the Ten Commandments. And he knew that a woman should not be in a tent with a man alone if it's not your wife. Isn't that beautiful? We've lost that, haven't we, in our time? We've lost that. Well, he didn't lose it. And he went to put up his hand to tell the woman, you shouldn't be here. Who let you in? 
but he couldn't move his arm or open his mouth. Like frozen. And the woman was very humble, but beautiful. Her eyes were down to the ground. She just smiled a little bit at him. And then she addressed him. This is a true story, by the way. You can actually look this up. By the way, a Catholic woman attorney has written a book about the whole thing. A Catholic lawyer who is a holy woman has written a book about all of this with all the details and the proof that you need. The woman looked at our first president, who was then a general, and she addressed him and noticed the nobility, the nobility of Our Lady. She did not say to our first president, hey, Georgie boy, that's what we do today. We're so disrespectful today about everything, you know what I mean? She didn't say, hey, Georgie boy, or she'd say, hey, big George, how you doing? She didn't say that either. You'd even say, hey, Mr. George. She said to him, son of the Republic. Isn't that beautiful? Son of the Republic, she said. And she moved her hand like this. And she said to him, General George Washington, look and learn. She moved her hand like this. And when she did, when she did that, George Washington said, a fog like cloud came into the tent and she moved her arm in front of him and he, he couldn't believe what was happening in front of him he saw this these clouds as he looked at the clouds in front of him they they stopped and he saw the battlefield that was outside the battlefield that was outside his tent he saw the whole battlefield and the coast where the british schooners were waiting their ship he saw all the soldiers their soldiers well fed well dressed ready to fight. He saw his soldiers not well-dressed, not well-fed, ready to die. There's no way they could win. And the Virgin Mother of God, and have no doubt about this, one day soon, the whole world will know. Every Protestant will know. Every Buddhist will know. Every Hindu will know. Every Muslim will know soon that Mary, the Mother of God, is the mediatrix of all graces and the queen of heaven and earth. Amen? Yes. The whole world will know this. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah? We, we can give God a round of applause, not to me, but to God. Well, George Washington found out that day. That was his day to find out. The whole world will know soon. She showed him everything. But she showed him that by a miracle, his little ragtag army would win the battle. And the United States would become a nation. She showed it to him. And what happened? On December the 24th, Christmas Eve, he invaded them by surprise attack and they won. Did you realize that on Christmas Eve? That's when we began to win the battle. Well, beloved, that wasn't all. Mama showed our first Catholic president that we would win and become a nation. Then everything disappeared. He looked at her to say something, but he couldn't open his mouth or move his arm. So Our Lady spoke to him. And very humbly and gently, Our Lady said to our first president, George Washington, she moved her arm again. She said to him, she didn't say Georgie boy. She said, Son of the Republic. Let's you and I begin speaking like Mary to one another with honor and integrity. Amen? Yeah. Don't speak in a dirty or callous way to people. I was with Father the other day, and a lady here in church spoke to Father and I. She said, hey, you guy, to Father and I, you guy. It was unbelievable. I couldn't believe it. You guy. You don't call a bishop or a priest, you guys. You say, Father, Father, thank you. Let me say this, right? Or your dad and mom, you say, hey, woman. You don't say, say hey, mama. You don't say, hey, woman, right? You say, hey, old man, what you up to? You say, dad, can I help you? Amen? Respect, you see, and honor and integrity will come back. Will come back to this world. So she called our first president, son of the Republic. She said to him, son of the Republic, look and learn, she said. She put her hand out 
And again the clouds came back in the tent. And when they disappeared, he saw another war. American fighting American. And the North and the South. And the lady said about 100 years from now, she said. What war was that? The Civil War. Almost exactly 100 years later, our lady showed George Washington a hundred years in advance what would happen. Amen. And Mary showed him that Christian peoples on both sides would raise up their hands in prayer. And when they raised their hands in prayer, suddenly God would answer from heaven. Just like the hands on Jesus there raised up like that. That's how they were raised. And when he saw our people praying, enough people, he sent a victory back over the country. And Mary said that battle would end suddenly. And the country would be reunited and would expand from east to west. Now, you have to know what that means. At that time, we weren't even a country. We were 13 colonies. Our lady showed George Washington, he said this, the whole land from the Atlantic to the Pacific. He saw, he saw California. He saw Del Monte. He saw everything all the way across. We were only 13 colonies. The Virgin showed our first Catholic president. We would become a, a huge country from east to west. Amen? Mama, beloved, she is the seat of all wisdom. God has shared with his mother alone the secrets that are to come. Amen? So he saw the country reunited. The clouds disappeared. And he looked at Mother Mary. And he went to say something to Mother Mary about what he just saw. He couldn't speak or move his arm. And Our Lady looked back. She said to him for a third time, Son of the Republic, she said, look and learn. A third time. This is all from the lips of George Washington. You can look this up. This is all true and validated. But the news media will not tell you this because they want you to despair and to drown in sadness. Amen? God loves this country. And God will not let the communist or the atheist or George Soros destroy this country. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Beloved, you won't believe what Mary did next. She put her hand out and said, look and learn. And George Washington saw our country all the way from east to west built up and developed. And he saw us invaded by three armies. He said, this will be the last battle of your country. The last battle before the end time. And he saw three armies come into our country from three different parts of the world. One was a red cloud, a red army. You believe that was Russia? It was from Northern Europe. One was a yellow cloud coming from the east. We believe it was China. And the third was a dark cloud coming from North Africa. He saw three clouds come into the country and invade the country. And we were in another battle and we were losing again. Towards the end of time, she said, we were losing. And Mary said to George Washington, the entire world will be lined up against your country. Does that sound familiar? The entire world will be lined up against your country. And as George Washington saw this, he's the father of our country, right? Next to God himself, he's the father of our country. It made him weak. And he saw this terrible, we were invaded from all over the world. We were invaded physically, and I would say this, electronically as well. Amen? Electronically as well. He saw all this. And as he watched this terrible scene, George Washington said he saw a little tiny campfire all dotted across the map. The map was in front of him, you see, in the chin. Little tiny campfires lit up, like in Florida, in Massachusetts, Missouri, Indiana, California. Little campfires. And he, he was wondering what that was. So he stepped and looked closer. 
and he got closer and closer. Do you know what the campfires were? They weren't campfires at all. As he looked closer, they were clusters. They were communities of Christians. They were gatherings of Christians around the country, raising their hands in prayer all over the country in small groups like this one, raising their hands in prayer, begging God to save the United States of America. And he, he noticed this, that when enough fires were lit across the country, including California, including Pittsburgh, when enough hands were raised in prayer, Suddenly, George Washington said, millions and millions of angels came down from heaven over this country and pushed all three armies off and back across the ocean. We won the battle completely, he said. And Mary said, when you win this battle, with God's help, you will keep your peace till the end of time. Amen. You remember what he saw? What were the little campfires? He saw a little campfires all over the map. What were they? They were Catholics and Christians raising their hand. Friends, would you raise your hands now? Like George Washington saw our first Catholic president. We have sworn testimony from the priest that he was baptized. When they raised their hands like this and said, God, save our country. God came down with angels and saved this land. Amen? We are in trouble, amen, because we've been sinful. But we're going to ask God now to save us. Are you ready? Would you say this after me? Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus we're, sorry. we're sorry. Forgive us of our sin. Forgive our country. We have been sinful. But you are merciful. Forgive all the sins of our nation. Forgive the pornography. Forgive the violence. Forgive the lying and cheating. Forgive the stealing. Forgive all of our sins. Send us the Holy Spirit. Send down your angels. Save this country. We don't deserve it. But we need it. Save our land. We love you. Save us. Forever. Amen. Now give God a round of applause to God. Alleluia. Beloved, that's what our first Catholic president saw. He saw you and I raising our hands to God in repentance and praying for our country. The reason, beloved, you can put it in a nutshell, the reason why we're almost gone now and almost lost, because we stop praying. We must pray like never before. Amen? especially the rosary, especially the rosary, and that new prayer you got tonight. When I said that prayer with a young man at Queen of Peace Shrine a little while ago, and I had him say that prayer with me, after three minutes I stopped and said, now tell me, what do you feel? He says, Father, I feel like God is real, that God's going to win. I feel peace in my heart for the first time. And we only said it three times for three minutes. Beloved, you and I, that boy represented our country. Our country is filled with evil. Amen? We have men marrying men and women marrying women. Would you give me a break? And that's just the beginning of the trouble. Amen? That's just the beginning of it. We have a man in the White House who calls himself not Catholic. No. He's not Catholic. He's a devout Catholic. He's a holy Catholic. And he will kill your baby if you just give him a dollar. 
He's responsible for the killing of millions and millions of babies in our country. And he calls himself a devout Catholic. Can somebody tell me why that's, how could that be? Somebody explain it to me. How could we be devout and kill our babies? Can somebody tell me how? Anybody? You can't, can you? You can never kill an innocent baby, ever. Did you know that once Padre Pio, his robe is here. I'll let you touch it after mass. Padre Pio, a lady came to Padre Pio when he was still on this earth. She went to confession. And Padre Pio said, Mama, you forgot something, didn't you? Because he could read soul. And she started crying. She said, yes, yes, I aborted, I killed my baby. Padre Pio said to her, Mama, God will forgive you. But he said to her, the baby you aborted was meant by God to be the next Pope. A true story. The baby you aborted was meant by God to be the Pope one day. Amen? You see what I'm saying, brothers and sisters? Brothers and sisters, our country has given itself up to abortion, to impurity, to drugs, to lying, to stealing, to atheism. It all must stop now. Amen? The Lord has promised the victory to his mother. And if we pray our rosaries faithfully, if we pray to her son, Jesus, God will reverse all of this and send the angels down and restore this country and restore the kingdom of God in the world. Amen? Amen. That little card you have, beloved, would you hold it in your hand? The little red card? You hold it up in the air for a moment. I'm going to bless your cards. I'm going to ask God to put a blessing on your card so it's a sacramental. May Almighty God bless the holy card that you are holding, that it will grant to you miracles when you say this prayer to every member of your family. When you say this prayer, all evil will disappear and the peace and the victory will come. Amen? Amen. Would you say this after me now? It's on your card. Would you say this after me? Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. One more time. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. One more time. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. God will not only save you, he will save this country and restore it if you...